Hello and welcome to a new episode talking about how we use the water plugin in UE4. In this first episode we're going to talk about the system itself, how it works and also get started with the various options we have available to us to create different water bodies such as ocean, lakes and rivers. So let's get started and dive right in. So to get started with the water plugin you first of all have to enable the plugin in your menu. So search for water and tick it to be enabled. When you do so, it will ask you to restart the engine. Just follow that and you'll be fine. And when you next boot it up, you'll have the water options in your place actors. Okay. Now, for this to work, you need a landscape. It can be done without one, but it does work best with a landscape. It's designed for landscapes. So let's just add a landscape in there. And we'll leave all the default settings on and hit create. And we're good to go. Now for a water plugin to work, you does need to have access to editable layers inside of our sculpt here. At the moment we don't have the option for that, we only have target layers, we don't actually have any build layers. So what we do is we click on our landscape with the select mode. And in the landscape settings you'll find the tick box for enable edit layers. We'll tick this, click yes and do done. So if I go back to my landscape mode, you'll see now we have the edit layers available to us. Now whilst we're in this layer, the default one, we can drag in our waters and let's start off with the water body ocean and you can see it's that easy to add water to your game now as you can see what it does is it draws out a spline i don't know if you can see that clearly but it draws out a spline here that you can manipulate and change the shape of your mass so let's go to our slip mode and choose our lines and we can just move these about freely change the tangents of them freely get different shapes and interesting things like that and you can also add new ones too if you were just to add in oh I accidentally bent that wrong way there we go um there we go um you can actually also add other spline points in but we hold down alt and just drag from one of these points it will add a point in between it for you so you can customize the shape even further and like a little bay here whatever you want okay you've got free choice and that's it and that's what it does now you can see the water here is really nice because it comes in with waves already done for you animating it also does the post processing for you so let's worry about that colorization the fogging the depth all that stuff is handled for you and as you can see what it does is deforms the landscape here and inserts this mesh for the water now as you can see with the spline it does have this weird effect where it just generates an offset of the fall off around the edges here like almost like a beach um, so what this is controlled by is the details settings so in the detail settings you'll find the options for terrain and they all have this section and in here you can control how much it changes the shape of the environment so for example, on the curve settings here, I can change how the curves work here. So we can go to the offset, make it bigger, smaller, whatever I want there. I also change the depth it takes, so what angle of a drop off it does it have, and also how long it takes to drop off fully. Okay, so you've got lots of really cool things you can mess about with this. Now the bit in the middle uh, can be changed by the next section in the fall off settings. We can change this with the fall off angle with an offset. Now if you haven't built up any landscape prior to putting in water, you're not going to notice any difference. But if we paint uh, something into here, let's go into landscape, sculpt, just sculpt some environment into here. You can see there's sort of like a force field around it. Okay. And that is because our land mass is being affected by the water model this fall off so you do get this issue of this sort of uh shape taking place here now if we go back to those settings and go to the water body ocean and go to terrain and go to the fall off settings i'll take a look at this fall off here the fall off width can be controlled here so we can change the effect that this has and the angle we can change too uh, 
and take the offset as well. But you can really customize these a little bit. Okay. Um, because of the Z offsets, so you can raise the whole land up a little bit higher. They get like a bump in the land. Like so. All pretty cool. Okay. However, what if you want to build out of here into the sea? Well, what you can do is if you go to your landscape mode, the layers here can be manipulated. So if I right click on this layer here and create another one, this layer is not affected anymore by the water. So I can now sculpt wherever I want. And this is all additive. So each layer is adding onto the previous layer. So whatever values I put in here, just simply adding onto the previous layers uh, information. Okay, so you can do all sorts of crazy stuff like this. Okay. Now there are other water bodies here. We've got uh, oceans and lakes and rivers, for example, and we've got islands. We'll go over that in a minute. But let's take a look at the uh, lake first. So the lakes are pretty simple. They just work almost like the ocean does, but in the inverse. So the middle part will become water, while the outside part. So if I pull this in, we've got our spline here, and you can see the inside of this is now water. And you get the same settings where you can control the amount of fall off there is, how much it changes it, and all that stuff. And you can customize the shape by just alt dragging from the spine points and doing whatever shape you want. Okay. Next is the river. So rivers, we can drag into here and place them into our scene. If I place it and connect it to this lake here, you can see that this is a seamless transition. Uh, because of the way the water system works is that you'll never notice the joining of these two meshes really. You may get some occasions where this might be higher. If it does, then you'll get this sort of waterfall look. So just simply just bring it down to water level and it'll be okay. Okay. Now rivers also have another benefit in that you can actually change how they flow. So at the moment you can see they're flowing in one direction here. Um, we can change this a lot as well by messing about with the height of it and, and things like that. Uh, let's move, change the, the flow of the environment here. As you can see, it brings the environment up with it. So the landscape adjusts its height with that. Um, and if we go down, it's got the same settings that you are used to here. So some other settings you can do with the river is you can actually change the speed of the river at various points of it. So if I say have this one a bit higher uh, than the others. Okay, so here water is going to be flowing a little bit quicker. Uh, so with that selected, if I go over to here to selected points, there's a water section. And if I open this up, you can change the depth at this point and the velocity of it. So I can increase the water velocity here. It's now getting faster at this point. Okay. So it'll get it's it'll blend slowly for this way. Well, that's going uphill here, it doesn't make much sense. Um but it'll reach this point, speed up, and then slow down again when it reaches the bottom. Okay, and with this effect you can actually do like waterfalls, for example. So if I were to take this endpoint of this river and raise this up. Okay and then change the velocity of this to something really high, like 2000, you get a waterfall. Okay. So definitely look around and play around the settings. Can you get some neat effects like this? Okay. Obviously we don't want it that fast. Bring that down and bring that back down. So I'm just going to bring this, uh, Water now a little bit lower because so it doesn't make much sense to go up like that. But it will cut into the landscape. That's fine. And then that's just annoying. It doesn't really matter. We won't worry about realism for today. Um, but 
that's how we do stuff like that and yeah mess about with the different z offsets you could do here so uh change the z offset for this okay change the edges see that happening there we sort of change the various depths at various points so if i want the water here to be deeper too let's go up to the top where i've got river depth i can make this a bit deeper i also make it wider more narrow um so change the width down a little bit And what's really good about this is that you can have objects also float in the water and they'll actually follow this velocity so they will speed up and go down it so you can make sort of a river rapids type effect so one other really neat thing we can do with the water is add buoyant objects so we can make them float and bob around and they'll follow the waves of the water as well as well as the speed of the river so let's create one of these we can go into create a blueprint class an actor and inside of there all we need to do is add in the mesh that we're going to have so i'll choose a cube for now Make that the root and then add a buoyancy uh, component. Now, the buoyancy component, you need to set up a few things. First, mostly important, you need to set up the pontoons. The pontoons are the parts of the shape that are going to be floating. And in this case, I'm just going to make the center of it float, so nothing too special. We're just going to open it up and double check that it's got the relative location set to 000, zero which is right in the center of it. And the radius is how wide this pontoon, this theoretical pontoon is. Uh, so I'll leave that like that. And then you've got a load of standard settings here which we can tweak around and experiment with. And this does involve some experimentation. You're not going to get it straight away. You just have to keep testing it out and see what looks and feels best for the game that you're making. Uh, but what we will do in here is we'll apply drag forces in water. So it can be dragged around pretty much and stopped and slowed down. And we're going to drag the... Uh, actually, no, I think we'll leave... We'll leave these settings as they are for now. Uh, and then we'll go down to the bottom and turn on auto activate. Don't know why it's turned off by default, just make sure it's turned on. And tell your cube to also simulate physics. And hit compile. And let's drag this into the world and see if this has done the job. So we'll just put it above the water here, hit simulate. And kind of there. It went down, then came back up. So it went down that far because it's quite heavy. So if I go and change the mass of this to be a lot lower, say 50, and hit simulate, it'll go a lot less farther because it's not as heavy. Okay. So there is our floating point object. You see it going up and down as well based upon these waves. So this also works for rivers. So let's show you this working for rivers. And drag that in there, hit play. And he goes and you can see him now following the flow of the river and he gets to this point he'll speed up oh he's been banked <laughs> okay we'll move him up a little bit simulate okay and away he goes yeah picking up speed as he reaches the faster currents at this point So as you see, it makes it very easy to make buoyant objects. And you can even put this on sort of like, uh, things like crafts, like rafts and boats, and you can make them saleable too, if they're controllable as a pawn. If they're as long as they've got a buoyancy node on them, it'll work. It's a really strong, very simple, easy to use system. With some great effects. So definitely try it out. Um, we're gonna quickly just make this into a little platforming challenge for us before we round up the uh, episode. Let's make this nice and big. Now remember that pontoon radius is quite small. So let's see how this reacts to a small pontoon. But not too bad at the moment. Let's go and actually push play on this properly. Oh, here I go. And I'm going to jump up there, am I? Let's bring it a bit closer. Okay. Let's climb up here. Jump on. Now because that pontoon's in the middle, this thing is going to like seesaw about because it only treats the middle part as the floaty bit. So obviously if you're making a raft, you want to put pontoons at each corner. And that could be quite something quite fun for a game. You can make that uh, something that pit layers can control, have say over if they build their own rafts, for example. Um, nonetheless, there you go.
And so now we've covered the basics of the water system. In the next episode, we're going to start diving a bit deeper into it and looking at different materials and settings we have available to us to change and customize the water to our own liking. To watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can watch that episode plus many others from just $1 a month. I say a massive thank you to all my YouTube members and Patreon subscribers for their continued support. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.